As we saw in the previous lecture, the determinant could be computed using expansion by minors. Now, the determinant is more flexible than what you think it is or what you might think it is. <laughs> Due to its properties, it enables us to compute it without resorting to stuff like expansion by minors, which is exhaustive. Before going into how to compute a determinant using row operations, the following properties will turn out to be useful. So property 1 tells us that a determinant is a linear function of each row separately. That is to say, if two rows are added with all other rows remaining the same, the determinants are also added. An example on that would be, I've got the following determinant, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 3, minus 4. You add the determinant of this matrix, of course, with a matrix containing the same rows except for one row. So let's leave the second and third row as they are. Modify the first one, I don't know, maybe 5, 6, 7. You could do the following. So you leave the two unchanged rows and you add those rows. So 5 plus 2 is 7, 6 plus 3 is 9, and 4 plus 7 is 11. The determinant of this matrix will turn out to be 10. The determinant of this matrix is 2, and this guy is 8. So if you've got two matrices with the same rows except for one row, then you could split the determinants. That's what we're saying. Also, this means that if I've got a matrix and I'm computing its determinant, let's say 1, 4, 0, 2, 5, 1, and I don't know, 1, 0, 0, which evaluates to, if we choose the last row, it will be 1 times 4, which is 4, right? If I come and scale any row by a number, let's say 7, multiply this by 7, this by 7, and this by 7, then the final solution is also multiplied by 7. So scaling a row will also scale your determinant in the same way. Okay? Another important property is when two rows of a matrix are equal, this directly implies that the determinant is 0. Example, 1, 2, 3, 5, 1, 7, and a 1, 2, 3. Determinant, 0. Why? First and third rows are equal. Let's say you've got a matrix that is 1, 0, 0, 2, 5, 1, and a 1, 4, 0 determinant is minus 4 and let's see what happens to the determinant when I flip two rows the first and the second let's say so flipping rows let's use the second row to compute the determinant so this guy is a 4 let's say I flip the first with the third row so here first with second rows and here first with third rows use the last row to compute the determinant so 4 again we can conclude here that if two rows exchange, the determinant flips or changes sign. If you add a determinant that is A and you flip two rows, the determinant becomes minus A. Any two rows, not necessarily the first with the second, any two rows. And one other important property is that if you've got a matrix, say 1, 4, 0, I'll grab, I don't know, 2, 5, 1, and 1, 0, 0, whose determinant is 4. And if a multiple of a row is subtracted from another row, let's say, instead of R2, you plug in R2 minus 8, R1, you get 1, 4, 0, minus 6, minus 27, 1, and 1, 0, 0. This will give you 1 into 4, that is, Four. So we can say that if a multiple of a row is subtracted from another row, the determinant remains unchanged.